Hi everyone, this week's lab is um, super easy, fun. You're just gonna be kind of starting to think about chemistry as you look around wherever you are, okay? You can do this at home, you can do this at work, you can do this um, driving around town, you know, with your dinner at McDonald's, whatever. Um, so you just wanna follow the directions carefully. So find two examples for each term, wherever you are. Describe them with both words and sketches. So using words and pictures can help us understand things better, um, including in chemistry. So for example, if you've got a solid, uh, maybe you have an ice cube, okay? And so you're gonna wanna write down some words to describe it. Um, for example, colorless, hard, cold, can shatter, has no smell. Here mine particularly has a rectangular shape. And so maybe I just draw my ice cube very simply, okay? This is the level of pictures that we're talking about, okay? So that would be one thing if I were doing this ass assignment. And then you wanna make sure that you have two examples to get your full credit, okay? Now this is just my example. So that counts as zero for you. And then you're gonna do some solid you find and another solid. So maybe you've got some ice, maybe you've got some table salt. All right, um, if you have that table salt, you know, dump it out, only do this with safe things, but dump it out, think about, you know, what kind of colors, is it shiny? Um, just kind of really learn to pay attention well. Um, same thing with liquids. I've got a boring one here, so I've got some liquid water to look at. Um, so again, make sure that you have word and pictures, word and pictures. Um, gas, you can not see it, but there's a bunch of air. Um, and so air is mostly oxygen gas and nitrogen gas. Um, those are the majority of air. So if you wanted to talk about air, then you're gonna think about what does it smell like? What does it taste like? What does it look like? And doesn't have a smell or doesn't have a taste is just as important as if it does. So think about that when you're observing as well. Um, find an example of heat moving, okay? So for example, you leave a water bottle out in the sun. Um, you're gonna see heat moving into that water bottle. And throughout the semester, um, it helps me to see some repetitive colors. So we will be using orange when we talk about um, heat or energy. Um, so here, hot sun is sending heat into your water. Your water temperature is gradually gonna go up, all right? Um, so you're gonna look for other places where heat might be transferred, okay? Um, I've got a lighter here. Um, so for example, if I have my hand near that flame, I'm feeling warmth. So I could say that heat is going from the flame to my hand, right? Um, when you're feeling something warm, that means heat is being transferred to you, okay? So again, think about filling these in and don't forget to give a couple sketches that include those arrows that show where heat is moving, okay? Um, in contrast, if I have something like an ice cube and I feel that and I say, ooh, that feels cold, okay? That ice cube feels cold. Then I could think about that ice cube feels cold because it's sucking heat in from the surroundings, okay? Um, so if this is my ice, it feels cold because it's sucking heat in. So this is a process where we're feeling warm. And if I'm holding, so if I'm holding the ice, I'm feeling cold. If I'm um, holding this water bottle, I'm feeling warm. So that kind of can help you think about where the heat is moving. Continuing on, keep up your scavenger hunt um, around your house, work, neighborhood, whatever. Um, so here you're gonna look for physical properties. This is gonna be a bit redundant to some of the observations, maybe all the observations you made on the previous page, okay? Um, again, two examples. So here it says choose new substances. So say I did salt and, or ice and salt on the first page, find two new substances, okay? And talk about what are some descriptions and we'll be getting better and better at this through the semester. Um, physical changes. So again, make sure you've got two. Make sure you've got some simple sketches um, on all of these, okay? Two things and some sketches, two physical changes. So physical change is where um, I have, say, water. And if I have some water that is melting, it's just going from water in the solid phase 
to water in the liquid phase. Okay, so that's an example of a physical change. See if you can find your own example of it, okay? Another example of a physical change that's a little bit um, trickier sometimes, here I've got some water, okay? But we're gonna talk about the change that happens to my salt, okay? So if I start with salt, we're gonna talk a lot about salt this semester, but we wanna learn that it's also sodium chloride, right? So solid sodium chloride. When I dump that into some water and I stir it up, I'm gonna to start to dissolve that salt, okay? And this is a process that can be easily reversed where if I just boiled the water off, I would be back to my same solid salt again. So when we talk about dissolving, what's happening is a solid goes into some water and we'll learn more about these chemical style reactions and notations later and it becomes, we put an AQ here. That AQ stands for aqueous or aqueous, and it means dissolved in water. So NaCl to NaCl, notice the chemical hasn't changed. That's how I know it's a physical property, or physical, or sorry, physical change. Um, you don't have to necessarily write these reactions out. You can just put words like you see here, but I wanna start introducing you to the fact that we can write these also in a chemical equation kind of style. Um, finally, seven and eight, we're looking at seven chemical changes, okay? So this is gonna be things like color change, smell change, acidity. Often, if you have two or more of those, this is, I think of cooking, right? Like you're smelling it, you're watching it, you're, you can tell like this is not the same. It smells really good all of a sudden, or it smells really bad all of a sudden, I'm burning it. So usually when you have two or more of these, that's a good um, hint, and you wanna take a picture of this change also um, to post on the class discussion board. So for example, back to my lighter, this is a chemical change. Um, it doesn't have any smell, but when I see huge amounts of energy being given off, as in light and heat, that's a good indicator also that you've got a chemical change happening, okay? So again, follow the directions. One, two descriptions, and then two pictures, okay? Finally, have a little fun with chemical names, okay? Um, so names can be intimidating, but really they're everywhere, and I hope I can get you to geek out a little this semester um, reading labels, okay? So like I've got some cherry coke here, all right? Notice that there are some chemical names here, all right? Um, so you can go with something as simple as high fructose corn syrup, because we could look that up and it's just a chemical, or you can write down phosphoric acid or caffeine. Um, you're gonna find four different chemical names. Another place to find some interesting names sometimes um, is house cleaners. I've got some spot remover here. Um, and so if I'm looking for chemicals, I'm looking down here at the ingredient list, um, ethyl, ethoxylated alcohol, citric acid, sodium hydroxide, those names are gonna start to mean a little bit more to us this semester, okay? So find four different chemical names, um, and that wraps up this week's lab, all right? So have some fun, um, and if you're coming across questions as you do this, make a note of them, write them in your margin, stick them on a sticky note, put them in your phone, um, bring some questions to class too. Um, that's what our together time is for, is to talk through some of the cool things that you wonder, okay? Or put them in your weekly discussion post. All right, so I will um, see you soon. Hope you have fun doing your lab this week.